What's going on guys? It's that guy with movies back here again. And uh, before we start this library haul today, um, heading out to see a movie and that movie is Spider-Man Far From Home. So we're heading on to the theater right now. So we'll go in there, I'll watch it and I'll tell you guys how it is and then stay tuned for the library haul. All right, guys, just got back home from the theater and also the library as well. Um, kind of like a weird way to kind of start off a pickups video is by going to see a movie. But uh, went to the library before the movie and then, uh, you know, I'll just tell you guys a little bit about Spider-Man Far From Home, which was the movie that I went and saw, of course. I uh, saw this one in AVX 3D. I'm just going to tell you guys a brief synopsis of this movie. No spoilers, of course. Because this is just going to be brief, I'm not going to be talking about the plot or anything, just what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. But uh, I absolutely loved this movie. It was so good. Uh, lived up to the trailers, lived up to the hype and everything, because I noticed that on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie had like 86%, and then just in the span of like a couple days, it like raised up to like 94%. Critic score, of course, you know, that's not really how you measure how good a movie is. It's just how many critics liked it. But uh, this was a really, really good movie. I thought it was probably as good as Homecoming. I know uh, Homecoming doesn't really get a whole lot of love from everybody. But I absolutely loved Homecoming and I love uh, Far From Home as well. And the 3D was pretty good in this movie as well. I uh, definitely do recommend going to see it in 3D. But uh, yeah, it was a really good movie. I really recommend going to see it. Probably... 8.5 maybe a 9 out of 10 for me just so good and uh you know i just love seeing like you know the europe setting and everything like going to venice and like italy or uh you know london and that it was uh really really cool but anyway though you guys are probably waiting to see the pickups i'll show you guys the games first just to kind of get them out of the way and then i'll show you guys the one tv show season i picked up one blu-ray and then the rest are all dvds so, for the three games, unfortunately, there were not really a whole lot of games that uh, were there. But, you know, I picked up some solid ones. Here, I'll just uh, open up our browser window just so we have a little bit of light. But, yeah, they're all Xbox One games, not like a mix of everything. But we're already two minutes into the video, so I'll just get going here. Uh, first one I picked up was Assassin's Creed Origins. This is a newer one, I believe. Uh, and looking at the... Uh, you know, the copyright info, yes it is, 2017. And, uh, you know, this this one will probably be really cool, because look at the cover. It's like ancient Egypt and everything, because you got like a pyramid there. And, uh, you know, some like hieroglyphs or whatever. And, uh, yeah, like, really cool, like, in the, you can like, fight on top of like, sphinxes and that. But it could be probably really cool. It's got like 4K, Ultra HD, HDR and everything. And uh, it's also got Atmos on here, which I've never seen Atmos on a game before. But, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed Origins, I knew I had to pick it up. It's a newer one. And, uh, you know, I just like playing these before I buy games because you never really know how good a, a game is until you buy it. But, you know, you could be wasting your money on it and it probably sucks. But uh, I've had that, I know from experience, that's happened to me before. But, uh Anyway, though, this next one here is actually at the Walmart that I usually go to. Uh, actually, one of the Walmarts that I go to actually has this game for only 20 bucks, But the other Walmarts have theirs for 80 which is really weird. But they had it there. Battlefield 5. I kind of like the Battlefield ones. They're okay. I know I played Battlefield 1, which is the World War One Battlefield game. But, uh, you know, Battlefield 5... Probably could be no different. It's a newer one. It came out last year, I believe. And, uh, yes, it did, 2018. So, yeah, Battlefield 5. Wanted to play that one for quite a while, and now I get to play it. I hope I don't need uh, gold membership, because I don't have gold. I used to have gold, but now I don't. But uh, this next one here is probably the, probably the newest one out of all of them. And this is another one. I've been wanting to play for a little while in another game I'm willing to give a second chance, and that is Hitman 2. Uh, they actually had the first Hitman game at the library, but they're probably not much different. I just want to try these just to see how they are, but, you know, I'm not really a fan. 
excuse me, I'm not really a fan of stealth games because I've tried to play Splinter Cell in the past, and they're just so hard, they're just so brutally hard, and, uh, you know, I don't mind the Hitman ones, the Hitman ones are pretty good, and the movie sucks, but, uh, you know, Hitman 2, I'm willing to try one of those games, I think I played Absolution on PS3 or something like that, but th that was a pretty fun game. Anyway, though, that's it for the game, so now we'll get on to the movies and TV shows, so... The first and only TV show I picked up there was Castle Rock, the complete first season, uh, which is actually kind of based off of all of Stephen King's stories and everything, and uh, it's a Hulu series, I believe they're making season two right now, and I've been wanting to watch it for a little while because I do like horror, I do like Stephen King, and uh, you know, this could be potentially a pretty good show. But this one comes on in three discs, I believe there's ten episodes in this season, so not a whole lot, but... I've got a lot to watch coming up in the next couple of days because, uh, you know, since I'm filming this on a Wednesday, uh, Stranger Things is actually coming out tomorrow, Season 3, so I might actually binge that, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, Castle Rock, um, just another TV show to watch. I still have to catch up on Swamp Thing as well. Uh, Swamp Thing is pr getting pretty good as well. I think I'm only on, like, Episode 4 or something like that, but it's a pretty good show. And, you know, Stranger Things coming out, I, I got a lot to watch, but, and these movies coming up as well. But this next one here is the only Blu-ray that I rented there, and that is Money Monster, starring George Clooney, Julia Roberts, and Jack O'Connell. Uh, also directed by Jodie Foster as well, so, uh, kind of a weird turn for her, and also, of course, George Clooney produces this. Uh, I believe he produces almost all of his movies that he's in now, but, uh... Yeah, Money Monster, I heard not too bad things about this one. I believe it's about, like, a news station that gets hijacked or something. Or, no, not hijacked. I think all the employees of this news station get uh, hold, uh, held hostage and that. But sounds like it could be a pretty kind of intense movie. But, yeah, Money Monster, I want to check that one out. So that's why I got that one. And then the next few are movies. Uh, this is a little bit smaller of a selection than last time, but... Um, I'll just show you guys anyways. So the first one here is one that I think I watched on Netflix a little while ago. Or no, I think I actually rented the Blu-ray from the library. And I didn't really care for it. I didn't actually finish watching it, I believe. But I do like to give stuff second chances. And that is Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. This isn't part of, like, the Harrison Ford ones or any of the sequels to, like, the Ben Affleck one. But this is kind of its own thing, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. It's got Chris Pine in it. And, uh, you know, Kevin Costner and Kira Knightley are also in this as well. But uh, I don't think I ever finished watching it, but like I said, I do want to give it a second shot. And it could be pretty good, uh, not too sure, but yeah. Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, let me know down below in the comments. Is this good or not? Let me know. How does it compare to, like, Clear and Present Danger, like, Patriot Games, or... I don't think you can probably compare anything to Hunt for Red October, but there's that as well. Or even some of all fears. But uh, anyway, though, this next one uh, that I got is Jersey Boys. This The only reason why I grabbed this one is because it's directed by Clint Eastwood. I heard okay things about this one. I heard it's probably not the best biopic ever. But this is a Broadway musical, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Is it? Did it come before the movie or did it come after the movie? I'm not sure. Maybe... Maybe the Broadway play is an adaptation of the movie, or I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Jersey Boys, Clint Eastwood directed it. It should be probably not too bad. You know, Christopher Walken is always a win, but uh, yeah, Jersey Boys. And then the next one here, I right, hear is probably a, a really good feel-good movie, and that is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I believe this is based off of like a short story, like a super old short story, and I believe they made a couple of movies like way back when but uh yeah this is the new the newer one with ben stiller in it so i believe he also uh he produced it and he directed it and he stars in it so pretty busy guy on this movie but yeah i hear it's a pretty pretty fun kind of feel good movie i'm not really too sure what it's about i believe he's just kind of like going on like a venture around the world because he's like a big time like daydreamer but uh yeah the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I hear it's supposed to be pretty good, so I do want to check it out. 
And then the next one here, I do. I am a fan of like these old kind of musician biopics, and that is Get On Up, starring Chadwick Boseman as James Brown, the Godfather of Soul. But uh, yeah, the artist who changed the music, the man who changed the rules, the icon who changed the world. That is uh, very much correct. But uh, yeah, Chadwick Boseman, he's a pretty good actor in my eyes. Uh, you know, of course, he's really good in Black Panther, and you know, he's he's really good. But uh, yeah, I do like biopics about like kind of older musicians. Like I really like the Bamba, Ray, uh, all that good stuff. I really like these kind of like '50s musician biopics. But yeah, I guess you could probably call them the Golden Age of music biopics. But yeah, get on up. Thought I'd grab that one. And then this next one here probably might be kind of a controversial one, but you know. Uh, no politics on this channel or anything, no political talk, but, uh, Fahrenheit 11.9. This is Michael Moore's documentary about Trump, but, uh, and actually his newest one as well, because it came out last year. But, yeah, probably a controversial pick. I'm not gonna, you know, talk too much about this one. It looked interesting. I heard pretty good things about it, so I do kind of want to check it out. So, kind of kept that a little bit brief, because, you know, no political talk on this channel or anything. But uh, these, and then the last two are movies. This is kind of more of a documentary, I guess. But this next one here is a movie that I did start watching on Netflix a little while ago and uh, just never got around to finishing it as well. A lot of movies I never get around to finishing for some reason, but that is The Finest Hours. This is a uh, movie released by Disney. But I hear not too bad things about this one. I believe it's about some kind of oil tanker that like splits in half or something. Uh, yeah. It's like a tanker that splits in half, but yeah, it also has Chris Pine, so we got one Chris Pine movie, and we've got another Chris Pine movie. Uh, Chris pine -a I guess, but uh, yeah, The Finest Hours, never finished watching it, but I don't know if this disc is going to play because uh, you guys probably can't see it because, you know, my camera sucks, but uh it is cracked, so there's a chance it might not play, but we'll try. We'll see what happens, but that is The Finest Hours. I believe this was on Netflix still, but I can't remember. It seems like whenever I want to watch something, they take stuff off of Netflix. It's weird. And uh, the last one here is supposed to be really, really good, and uh, that is Hunt for the Wilder People, starring uh, Sam Neill and Julian Dennison, who was also recently in Deadpool 2. But uh, this is from Taika Waititi, who also did Thor Ragnarok, and uh, you know this this was the only reason why Julian Dennison right here got casted in Deadpool because Ryan Reynolds actually watched this movie, and uh, he really enjoyed him in this one, so that's why he got him in there. But you know it's a Taika Waititi movie; it might be a whole lot of fun. Uh, got major, you know, props to that guy for doing what he wanted to do with Ragnarok and everything. But, uh, yeah, I hear it's supposed to be pretty good, so that is that one. Anyway, though, guys, that is about it for this uh, library pickups video. I know a lot of you guys really liked the first one, so thought I'd, uh, you know, strike back with another one here. And uh, not as good as the first time, not as good as the first library haul, but still pretty solid pickups altogether. And, man, I got a whole lot to watch. But anyway, though, guys, that is about it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, Twitter and Instagram links will be in the description down below if you want to follow me on there. Also, be sure to check out my IMDb profile page. A link for that will be down below in the description of this video as well. Also, be sure to click the notification bell on the channel to be notified of future videos, new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So anyway, though, guys, that is about it. Thanks for watching. And we'll actually do a little, little bit of a thumbnail opportunity here. So maybe we'll do something like... There we go. Anyway, though, guys, that is about it. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Alright guys, just got back home from the library and also, uh, I forgot to close my door.